Hi all and welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and the first part in a short series I'm doing covering the installation of device drivers and software required to allow your imaging program of choice to do its job. This video will be covering the install and configuration of various drivers for your equipment and as such is very brand specific but the general principles behind it all is the same. All you need to do is, if you haven't got the gear I'm using, go to the manufacturer's website, get the appropriate drivers and away you go. Again, this is very specific to what I'm using, um, so you won't see me installing things like electronic flat fields and um, rotators and such. And with them, as I said before, go to the manufacturer's website, get the appropriate drivers and install them as per their instructions. Additionally, manufacturers now are producing unified drivers that contain all the drivers for their equipment so if you're using a Pegasus Astro item um, you install their Unity platform and it installs all the drivers for all their gear even if you haven't got it it's the same with ZWO when you install their ASCOM driver it installs the drivers for the filter wheels and the focusing motors etc so you won't actually see me installing them because they're included in the drivers I'll be getting for the camera but if you have a need to download a different one simply go to the manufacturers website get the driver and install it as per their instructions now for today's equipment install, you only need to have one piece of your gear connected and that is your mount to allow you to fully set up and configure the driver. Whether you have anything else connected doesn't really matter. Um, I've connected my guiding camera but that's for a very specific reason that most people won't need but I'll go through that once I've installed the camera drivers. So now we're all ready to go, let's get going. So we're going to start with something that has caused many headaches for users over the years either due to not being installed or being incorrectly configured especially if you're using a USB connection on your mount and that's a USB serial driver. Now do you need one? Well just let me say that if you're using a wireless connection between your mount and your computer go make a kappa or perhaps skip to the next chapter in this video because this is irrelevant to you. There is no USB involved. But if you're using a cable connection between your mount and the computer, then yes, you will need one. It's only a case of deciding which one you need. So what does this actually do? Well, these are like a translator chip. Uh, back in the days when your computers were older and had serial ports on the back of them, uh, your mount connected between the mount and the computer via the serial port, and the language was the language that both ends could talk. But when USB came along, the USB ports on the computer started disappearing and the mounts kept talking in uh, the serial port language and what happens is when that gets transferred into a USB connection, it gets garbled and the uh, USB serial chip sits in the middle there and it simply retranslates the signal into a message that the computer can use very basic description but that's what they do um, so if you're connecting by cable you do need to use one now which one you use is up to you because you have a couple uh, there's generally two providers um, FTDI if you want one of them you'll have to go out and buy a special cable with the chip built in and for that you'll have to download the driver you, do, you need and set it up as per the instructions from the manufacturer the other one is Prolific. They also do a cable with a chip in it, but you don't need to purchase one of them. Uh, you can either connect to your computer via a cable that connects into the hand controller port, like an EQ mod cable, or one that connects to a USB port, just a USB cable into the USB port on your computer, on your mount. Um, because computers, PCs for many years have had the prolif Prolific chip already built into them. So you don't need to actually buy a separate cable if you're going to use Prolific. It's only if you're going to use FTDI. Now, the problem for the people had with this is the fact that uh, for many years, Windows has not recognized that the driver exists, uh, that the chip exists, mainly because you could call these a magical chip. They only appear exactly when needed. Um, 
and of course Windows ignores something they can't see and because the chip isn't active they can't see it. Um, thankfully Windows 11 they finally got around to including the driver so you don't need to install one if you're on Windows 11. If you're on Windows 10 or earlier you may need to check whether you need to install one or not because something else you have connected may have already installed one. Now to check if you need to install one or you have one already installed, uh, this works on Windows 10 and everything else as well so it's not a problem. Uh, simply right click on your start button and go to device manager or go to device manager any way you like. Now if your mount is not connected and plugged in, even if the driver is installed it won't show up there. That's why I'm calling this a magic one because it only appears as needed. Now I've unplugged my mount on purpose just to show you this. I'm just going to quickly nip over and plug it back in and you'll see this port magically appear. Just give me a second. And there you go, it exists. Now if you don't get one turning up when your mount's plugged in, you need to install one. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Um, so, but first of all, there's probably one setting you I'm going to change. Well, I've already changed it, but I'll show you here. Uh, either double click on it or right click and select properties and go to port settings. Now, I don't know about other brands, but the default setting for this is 9600. Um, if you're connecting to a, a Skywatcher mount, or an EQ mod compatible mount through the handset controller you can leave this at 9600 uh, but if you're connecting through what is a USB port on the mount that now come on most modern mounts you need to change this to 115 200 um, I don't know if this also applies to other types of mounts but definitely anything connecting through EQ mod or Skywatcher need this um, so change that setting and you'll be able to communicate and of course you'll have to change the setting in the driver as well if needed when we get to that so just click OK so if you haven't got one here uh, simply follow the link in the um, description and it'll take you to the prolific website where you'll find the prolific installer here so download that and then once you've got that downloaded browse to where it is on your desktop or on your downloads I've got it on the desktop here I won't be installing it of course but simply double click on the zip file um, and it opens up this uh, go into the directory and what you're looking for is the setup this one here and all you do is run the setup and that will install the driver for you so quite simple and done and hopefully you'll be able to communicate with your mount as long as you double check that if you need to change the port speed you do that so that's done that's a prolific driver out of the way and hopefully it'll work and all you wireless users come on back so now we'll move on to what is probably the easiest install of all uh, very simple and that's the ASCOM platform and what is the ASCOM platform well it's basically like the spinal cord of the whole system um, manufacturers write drivers that are supported by ASCOM and uh, ASCOM allows the interconnection between all your different devices and your software. Uh, it's especially handy for mounts as it allows mounts to be controlled and connect to multiple uh, software programs at once so you can have your mount connected to your imaging software, uh, guiding software and a planetarium all at once and they'll all know what's going on with the mount when you move it or do something in one of them but as I said this is going to be the most basic thing to set up because it's quite easy so let's get on with it simply follow the link in the description which will take you to the um, ASCOM website and you can read a little bit about it if you like but on the right hand side over here you need to download the latest version um, so simply click on the download ba button and it will download the version you need to install. Once you've downloaded it, simply go to wherever you downloaded it, find the ASCOM platform uh, file and double click on it. And away you go. This is a fairly long install. Uh, yes, I want to let it. Um, simply because there's so much to install. 
and come on now just a note on this it's collecting information okay it's got that so just install um, just a note on this that if you download it and you haven't yet installed Microsoft.NET 3.5 it will download and install it um, for you old versions you used to have to actually download it yourself but I've actually installed 3.5 already so I don't have to worry about that but if you don't have it installed it will download and install it which of course is going to greatly increase your uh, download and install time so mine's going fairly quickly here considering it's a slow old computer um, as you can see you end up with two icons on your desktop you'll probably never need to go into them um, you might need to go in the diagnostics if you have something you want to troubleshoot or you need to set up a specific drive in a specific way um, but generally you won't need to I will be going into it later simply because I want to do something with one of my cameras so coming up to completing this eventually um, not much you can do there we go and finish and that's it that's probably all you'll ever need to do for ASCOM but it needs to be installed first so all the other drivers you connect to are going to be installed after it's finished and they can connect to it so we'll move on to the next one now I'm going to install the mount drivers um, and of course this is dependent on what mount you're using as I'm using Skywatcher mounts at the moment I'm going to be using EQ ASCOM from the EQ mod project and this covers center type mounts uh, from Skywatcher um, some of the Ryan mounts uh, Saxon and other manufacturers but uh, they all use the same system they're all based on the center mount and that's what I'll be installing today um, with these type of mounts you actually do get a choice of what type of drivers or what drive you install and just so you know not all drivers are created equal for a Skywatcher mount you can either connect using EQ ASCOM or Green Swamp servers another good one that people use I'm just happy using EQ ASCOM but uh, Skywatch also provide their SynScan app which you can use as a way to connect to your mount um, it's not too bad but it's not something that really interests me but some people use it and like it so if you're happy with that one you can um, one I do suggest avoiding is the actual Skywatcher um, ASCOM driver it is so basic and simple uh, nothing like the community generated ones in EQ ASCOM and Green Swamp Server avoid that like anything because there's not much you can do with it so like everything else simply follow the link in the description which will take you to the EQ ASCOM download page uh, at the top you want to download the latest version uh, always best and this one works well so download that uh, once it's downloaded simply go to wherever you saved it to and find your EQ ASCOM setup and double click on it uh, this is quite a quick setup um, I'm going to install you don't need to do this but I'm going to install two instances of it because I actually want to end up connecting two mounts at once so I need two instances to run two mounts um, it's up to you whether you install the sample scripts or the source files I'll leave the sample scripts because you can script for it and just next and install okay don't worry about this little bit we'll fix it in a minute uh, when it says the registrations failed uh, it's because it doesn't have the permissions to do it and we need to fix that up but that's where the next step so we click OK and done uh, I don't need to read these notes I've been using the program for quite some time and finish now the first thing we want to do is deal with that registration error and uh, you need to go into you see that for me it's gone under my start here um, it can either be there or go into your apps listing and go down to EQ mod if you go in there it is right down near the bottom uh, of, a, of a long list for your toolbox now for this you need to run it as the administrator the first time you run it it's the only time you'll run it as the administrator but you need to do it the first time and this is because of that registration problem so simply right click on it run as administrator yes I want to allow it to make changes and it's just a little box like this and as administrator all you do is hit the register button 
and you see it's success. So that's why it failed during the install because it needed to be run as administrator. So simply close that up again and the next time you start it, which will be right now to configure the driver, uh, simply go in and run it as a normal user. So now we've got up and the first thing we need to do is the driver setup. So this is the basic setup for the driver. Here it comes up here. Now you can either specify a mount by going to custom which will let you choose your mount from a list. Uh, you have to do it on both sides of it. You generally shouldn't need to do this um, unless you've got a mount that you've done a belt mod on. Uh, if you've done a belt mod, in other words they didn't come with the mod with the belt on them, you will need to set a custom one because you'll need to, to set the uh, worm steps and everything else in there and if you've done the belt mod I'm pretty sure you know what you'd need to set in there if you don't you can go to the EQ mod website and you can find a list of what are the most used settings in there but as I've got normal mounts I'm going to connect two mounts later on but initially I'm only going to be running one so I'm going to set it up at auto detect when I connect two mounts I'll have to specify a mount in each one so that's done now your port settings as I said, go in here, um, time out, two seconds, if you can't communicate in and in two seconds something's wrong, I want it to try at least a couple of times. And this is where you need to set the rate. Like I said, if you're connected through your normal hand, hand controller port with a cable that way, leave it at the default of 9600 and click on that. But because I'm using a USB connection, I need to go there. Now for port, you can either just click on that and it'll find it, I'm going to specify it because I know it's COM5. Um, I could just leave it at that, but if you hit search, it'll go through and do a bit of a search. Bing, found COM5. Um, from there, uh, let's go. Allow Meridian Flips. No, you don't want your mount controlling Meridian Flips. Uh, leave everything else down here there's nothing for you to change down here i do add a couple of steps in between three and four here later on but i can do that later it won't matter um, show advanced options these are just a couple of advanced options when the driver's actually up you don't need them so i wouldn't bother i've never tried a friendly name but i might do one one day actually i might do it when i do the two now you need to set your latitude and like longitude and location um, I'm going to set mine. You can save this if you like. Uh, let me see. I'm going to set it to 36. Uh, 36. 0. 0. And 151. 0. 0. Uh, my elevation is only about 25 meters now this isn't exactly my home it's a little bit off but uh, about the continental shelf I think um, so you can save it if you like okay I'm going to save this in number 10 oh, sorry I should have selected number 10 first uh, what did I set 36 0 0 and 151 0 0 and 25 okay um, I'm going to name that not home and I'll save that now this doesn't really matter to me but simply because I set it up with the next step which is over here allow site rights by allowing that it means my mount uh, my imaging software which I use APT can tell the mount where I am so it, it will get its location information from APT so I've only got to set it in one position um, epoch I always use J2000 um, it gives it a fixed when you do plate solving that it gives it a fixed time for for it to do the uh, plate solving over time it slightly changes by doing a J2000 you know as long as it matches here and in your imaging software you should be fine uh, you leave it on ASCOM uh, pulse guiding and that's all we need to do here at the moment so you've got your location and everything else set all good and then just click OK 
Next you need to go into the actual mount and you, to do that you go ASCOM connect and there we go it's actually figured out because I set my like oh, what happened there somehow rather minimized it <laughs> doesn't normally minimize oh it's because I've probably done it before okay um, so in here you don't need to change anything on the front page of course except I might park it um, over this side as you see I've got my site information already in here the alignment we will go into that one later uh, you park and unpark I can go into that later because there's things you can do your pulse rate settings whack these all the way up to 0.9 now later on you may be able to lower these down slightly to 0.8 or 0.7 but start out at 0.9 um, just to set it going um, always in on top I disable that uh, make sure your flip margin is set to zero um, don't need to change anything there uh, I turn off my polar scope just to save that little tiny bit of power it chooses and that's done and that's it the mount is configured this part like I said you can only do with the mount connected that's why I uh, did it so there you go so the mounts parked everything's set up in here um, mount limits now a lot of websites you go to and discussion forums especially if you have problems with a meridian flip in your software will tell you to disable your mount limits um, I like having it enabled and I'll go into a video later that details why and how to set the appropriate mount limits so you don't have any problems I mean generally they say it as a result to a flip failure but quite often it's not your mount limits is causing the issue so I'll get into that later but that's it for setting up my mount drivers uh, ASCOM disconnect and I can close that down and then we're ready to move on to the next section uh, what am I doing next I'll find out in a minute uh, next is our final part of this particular video and that's installing my ZWO drivers for my camera which will also install them for my filter wheel and focus motor um, as usual it's the same thing same process as we go through this um, follow the link to the uh, ZWO website and it'll take you to this page um, used to be that ZWO actually had them on their other website this is their new specific for uh, the driver downloads and software website and here you get to decide what you want to download um, there are three options on the download page uh, camera driver that's the Windows one you must download that um, and you're very likely to need the uh, ASCOM drivers as well to make everything work um, so those two really you must down download and as I say this covers the cameras AAF their mounts and other devices um, and you need to get those two the other one to download maybe is ASI studio I generally don't use this for much but it does have a couple of useful features uh, the main one for me is a fits viewer comes in very handy for running through directories of images to have a look at them without having to load up anything too um, strong and the other one I use occasionally is the ASI cap the ASI cap program um, that's good for just doing quick little looks at your equipment and configuring or playing with your, your equipment and I've even used it occasionally for planetary in imaging so a little handy but that's a totally optional install if you want to do it I'll be installing it because I do use it so once you've downloaded it simply go to where you've downloaded actually I've got three if you see here uh, you got your Windows your ASCOM and ASI Studio so simply download the camera drivers as I say this is a must no matter what you're doing um, click yes next to continue I install in the default now these drivers will provide two native drivers for your camera which is good and the ASCOM driver will actually add two more which is good for me in case you need to run more than two cameras so again the ASCOM drivers I don't know why that first driver doesn't have an agreement but this one does um, 
I just installed all the selected drivers. You don't need uh, ST4. That's the old guiding method where you connect your camera to the mount and, and go that way. Um, most days, most times now, you, people use the uh, pulse guiding, which is so much better. So just leave the just that off. Uh, and install again. Again, nice quick install. It's setting up your ASCOM drivers. And this is why you need to install ASCOM first because otherwise these drivers can't connect to ASCOM to get configured properly. So there's that goes. And finally, like I said, I'm going to install ASI Studio. Uh, yes. Um, like I said, the main thing is mine's for ASICAP and uh, and the uh, fits viewer install it as per anything else I don't like it keeps showing all these damn links onto my desktop I'll solve them later and that's done I'm not going to run it and click finish now just to finish up with as I said earlier I've installed my guide camera um, mainly because well, nowadays it's because I ran run three ASI uh, three ZWA cameras. I've got my guide camera and two imaging cameras, and I often run them both at the same time. So the native drivers only provide two drivers, so for two cameras. So you need the ASCOM drivers to run another two cameras. Um, now, what I'm about to do is actually the same. I did this even when I had two cameras. I had a problem. Um, with the camera getting mixed up. Uh, I'd have it connected to my guiding program, but I'd start my imaging program and it'd take the camera. So to avoid that, and it was probably just me when I had two cameras, it was probably just my settings. Um, I did this and I still do it now and it's never been a problem. So I go choose device, uh, choose and connect device. And from here, like I said, uh, go to this list here. That's a list of the different types of items you can get in ASCOM. I go to camera, select choose, and you'll get a list here. Now, the first time you access an ASCOM driver, it doesn't matter whether you're doing it through here or through your imaging program, it will tell you you need to set up the properties, which is good. So I want to go to ASI camera, and I'm going to set this as camera one. Okay, these are my ASCOM drivers, which are totally separate to the native drivers. So then I go properties, and from here, if I had more cameras connected, they'd be listed, but I've got my mini here. Um, I click on advanced settings because it's only an imaging program. I don't need RAW 16, RAW 8 is plenty and is faster. Uh, nothing else I need to, che 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 to check here, and so I click OK. And click OK. So now I've associated my guide camera with the ASCOM camera. When I set up uh, PHD2 and select the camera, I can select ASCOM driver 1 and it will always be my guide camera. Uh, it just solves, like I said, other cameras trying, other programs trying to grab the camera when they shouldn't be. And since I've done that, I've never had a problem. And because I run three cameras now, I can have that on that driver and use the native drivers for the two imaging cameras. But that's about it for today. Um, I don't think there's anything else I've got to set up at this stage. So for now, I'll just say uh, wishes all clear skies. And I will see you in the next video where I'll be, where I'll be installing uh, and setting up plate solving software. So take it easy till then, clear skies all.